Well, I mean, in the curing side, it's been, uh, of course, we had a very busy year. We had a record year last year, so that was uh, good for us. But um, obviously, it's still a very dynamic situation with the supply chain, with the situation going on, of course, with the war in Ukraine has, has definitely caused a big impact on our supply chain and also on the cost cost related items. So it's been a, a big challenge to, to, to keep up with the the supply and the deliveries for our customers. Yeah, because the customers are uh, obviously the demand is um, is really taking off. Okay, it's maybe say level or soften slightly in Europe due to the situation with with uh, Eastern Europe or let's say the Russian markets. But um, in the Americas especially is a big, big demand for for tickets or tires as a, as a whatever you want to call them. So um, obviously big requirement to, to fill that those gaps as fast as possible. So a lot of, um, because people know that there's a much longer lead time on equipment than they're even, let's say in some cases or a lot of cases buying on anticipation because um, they, they have to, instead of having maybe six, seven, eight months delivery, now we're talking about 12, 13, 14 months delivery time. Yeah, well, we're looking for creative ways to, um, obviously, the more standardized we are with our customers, the easier it is for us to, let's say, order in advance, because then there's very minimal risk. I mean, the long need items are basically common components to all cabinets. So like IO cards, safety IOs, uh, HMIs, these type of things. So um, we can get uh, try to be a little more creative to pre-order with our suppliers, such as Siemens, as you mentioned, or or other component suppliers. So shortly after the electrical components comes other items that happen to have chips in them. So like LVDTs or you know whatever the other the items may be. So yeah, we have to get creative and try to to um, be ready to order either immediately or to to order in advance some components to to shorten the lead times. Yeah, we're looking, I, I would say the right now, the innovations related in par partially due to the standardization and the, this, this alternative supplies. So we want to be able to be really modular so that you can put in different, different features very easily. So, and, um, and also having these alternative suppliers uh, with the possibility to swap things in out one-to-one. -one. Um, some other are more space-saving solutions. So layouts, that we have multiple layout configurations. So you can put, a, let's say, for example, the 52-inch curing press in the space of a 40 or a 42-inch mechanical press. Mm -hmm. We're doing this today. So, I mean, that's, a, say, 10 pounds in a 5-pound bag, if you will. I mean, that's doing, doing quite a lot in some old buildings, some old trenches. Uh, and then our Cure Master um, was, was designed now a few years ago, and it's been very successful. Mm -hmm. um, design, which we're, which is right now for truck. The Cure Master is a truck press. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's uh, some of the, let's say, main innovations up till this point. And that's with the standardized press. I mean, so when we have the majority of the components, then we try to use for all customers. So I mean, the base, the, the the frames works, and the and and the. the the loader columns and all of these things, these are then basically the same components for all customers. And then we have to mount on maybe a customized chuck or a customized center mech or maybe the adapter for the for SMO, for example. These things we modify in the heating packages for the customers. But as many of the components as possible, we're trying to run through our production with the same, the same components. So that allows us to machine them re regardless of what color they are, so to speak. Yeah, I think you're talking about that in uh, a few minutes in the in the separate interview. But I mean, in just I mean, since you asked the question, I mean, of course, we're looking for for getting more and more feedback from the machines, and and not just getting the feedback, but then giving that to the customers. I mean, they have their internal systems already, but then the main thing is to really we're the experts in our machinery. So it's like, how can we get out the specific components or important pieces there, and then tell the customer, look, something is off. You should check it. And not only should you check it, but what are the, maybe the two or three things most likely you need to do? Mm -hmm. And even if you need to do it, then how do you do it? Mm -hmm. And so on. So, I mean, this is the intuitive 
um, process to make it easy for the maintenance guy or, or you know, to, to, to figure out what he needs to do. And also on a predictive basis would also be the other part of it. So it's trying to avoid the problem altogether is another issue. The main thing we're looking at with the customers are, is, is yeah, definitely ways to make the machines, first of all. If we're talking about a steam, steam press, then to make, make sure that they're as efficient as possible. So we're, we've been analyzing the complete press, analyzing the piping, and trying to figure out where are the main areas for saving. It's like our house, you know, what, do you, what, do you, what would you insulate first? So roof, then windows, I mean, things like this. So now we're looking at where is the, the most heat loss and then testing with, with certain types of insulation to then reduce that heat loss. So that would be like for the piping and also around the, basically the top of the press and the main areas where the steam is escaping. So this is, this is the one area for energy efficiency that's um, most important. I mean, the, the first thing most are looking for a complete, complete solution. So with a CE mark, I mean, even the majority tier one, all expecting um, a CE mark on the machine, regardless of where it's going in the world. So if it's going to India, it goes to China, it goes to 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 US or, or Europe. Those that has to have a, a CE mark. And for curing press, that means we have to meet all of the, the norms, mm -hmm. which means this specific C norm that exists for curing presses. So that's the first thing, safety, top one. Um, the next one is, of course, as, as you talked about energy efficiency, well, they're expecting, there's a whole lot of discussion, of course, about the neutrality of, you know, from a CO2 footprint. And so this is the big thing. I mean, not just for curing, but it's for the tire plant. So this has to do with raw materials. It has to do with the boiler. It has to do with, but curing press is using the majority of the energy, let's say, in the, in the plant. So then there's the discussion about if we're shifting from steam towards electric curing. So this is the big topic that's going on right now. Well, the US, we've been always active, extremely active. So we're delivering every, almost every, every week, presses are going to, to the US right now. So, I mean, that's, that's been ongoing, but we, and that's been for 20 years, not always every week presses, have, but I mean, a significant amount of presses to the Americas from our side. Um, and then you said, well, then you mentioned Serbia and then you mentioned Asia or what? Yeah, Serbia. yeah Serbia also we're delivering um, to some of the green fields there, not all, but, but a lot. So we've been quite active in, in that market. And of course our manufacturing plant is, you can ride a bicycle basically to the Serbian border. So, I mean, we're, we're very, it's a quick drive. So transport is definitely um, probably the, the, one of the least expensive options. Um, and as far as Asia goes, of course, I mentioned China is a big part of Asia, but not the only part. It's been very quiet for us, at least, um, due through COVID and through the crisis. So we're hoping that that's uh, getting more active again, let's say. So we're working with some Asian suppliers, but not delivering in Asia, let's say, for the, it's definitely the, for Serbia, for example, is one place you mentioned. Yeah, so far that's not, there's not been any impact for us. So that's the nice thing. Okay, the, the big impact in the market was the larger tire sizes, but, this, uh, but those sizes, and actually that's a big reason for the expansion in business for us, I believe, is, is the biggest one because they, the existing older presses cannot manage the tire sizes of the 52 inch press, which is the most common. Um, for materials of the tire, so far we really also don't run up against any, any impacts from that side. Yeah, I mean, we see that as, that's part of the modular scope, which is nice. I mean, if you're able to, I mean, mostly we try to foresee that a PCI is the biggest option that someone considers maybe later in, after they've bought a press. So we at least try to make that so that it's very easy to, to retrofit. Um, sometimes now uh, getting more and more nitrogen um, requirement for the steam process, uh, for the heating process. So that's a little more difficult, but, but possible. And um, yeah, for automatic connection, for automatic handling systems, we have this, this modularity built into the machine so we don't have to completely tear the machine apart, like you're, like you're saying. Yeah, and then with the electric curing, then the next one will be is like, how can you just more or less take out the heating package and put in an um, electric solution? So this is like 
and, and this is at least what we're always trying to consider so that we're not, like you say, have to buy a complete new press um, if some new feature comes up. Yeah, so the, I mean, is obviously with the CO2 footprint topic, then today everything is being heated with steam and, and then, or, and using nitrogen as well. And then, uh, but if you consider to, to heat with electric, completely with electric, then you would take out your heating package, existing heating package, and replace it with new platens and a new Centomec, for example, is at least the, the push that we're getting from, from the majority in the market right now. Are you working on that solution? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And so when are going to introduce like... This is what I said before, we, we have some parts of it, um, we don't have the whole thing yet, so we're, we're working on that actively. I think we mentioned some of them. I mean, we have to get those innovations out there yesterday. So, and um, I, yeah, keeping up with the, with the requirements, keeping up with and trying to push on this, these uh, alternative suppliers and making it easy for our customer to be able to, yeah, to take a machine that has all of these different alternative suppliers built in. And they have to be, it's not just that you can say I, we can deliver everything, but that we can literally pop one to one put the pieces in and out okay so that's um yeah about it